Hey everybody, it's Roberto. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of how I actually do my video editing for this YouTube channel. So um, I'm gonna show you how I edit one of my videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. So one of the things I do is um, I actually keep my files kind of organized uh, in the bin here. I have different folders that I've organized uh, my video footage in. So one of the first things I do is I um, take the footage that I want and instead of putting it into the source monitor the way most people do, I just edit everything on the timeline now uh, because it's really convenient and it's really simple. So the first thing that I do is I do that right click and I do new clip from timeline and that just sorts everything out. Uh, you know, I don't have to worry about resizing anything. I don't have to worry about formatting. I don't have to deal with any of that. So that's one of the first things I do. Uh, the second thing I do is I go ahead and I expand all the tracks. So um, what that does is it lets me see the waveforms of the videos. And then when I do cutting, I get to see thumbnails of the clips. So that's just really helpful for me in terms of, so that's just really helpful for me in terms of editing visually. Before I do any editing to any of my clips, I need to make sure that the sound quality is gonna be good. So I right click and I go to edit clip in Adobe Audition, which launches Adobe Audition to render and replace the audio file. By doing this, I can just clean up any of the background noise um, and just do whatever I think I need to do. Um, I used to do a lot more in terms of my audio editing workflow, but I found a way to simplify it. And I'm gonna show you that really quick in Adobe Audition. So you can see it automatically opens the clip in Adobe Audition. One of the first things I do is I actually turn up the volume on this by about maybe uh, 10 decibels or so uh, just because of the uh, lapel mic that I use when I do my recording on the Nikon DSLR camera that I use. So that's what I go ahead and do. And the next thing I do immediately after that, um, I used to do uh, noise print capture, but I found that it's actually uh, just as good and fast for me to do adaptive noise reduction. So I go ahead and I find a place on the timeline uh, that's not, you know, uh, super quiet or anything. Um, Dancers, my style changes yet again. If, uh, if I had to use three words to define it. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. So I'll just select everything and I'll hit apply and do the adaptive noise reduction. So it'll go ahead and it will process that accordingly. And uh, that's what we'll have. It will just have cleaner overall sound. Okay. So once it's uh, finished the adaptive noise reduction, I just click on an area and I play it back to see how it sounds. Me and my friend Ryan Smith over at Ad House was the fact that I have a lot of... Okay, so if I like how it sounds, uh, you know, the next thing I might do is I might tweak the levels just a little bit. And then I might process it with something from the effects rack. Usually for me, and this is just for my voice because I've just done testing with this over and over, I can do a couple of things. I can either do clean up and level voiceover, or I can do music enhancer, and both of those work well just for what my particular voice is. So for an example, uh, okay, if I do that. A lot of different visual styles. And if you've been watching any of like my Photoshop stuff. Okay, so I do like the way that that sounds overall, so I'm just gonna apply that effect to the entire audio track, and I'm gonna let it process that. Once it's finished, uh, I'll be able to save and go right back over to Adobe Premiere and the new sound will be in place. Okay, so now that the audio is finished processing, I'm just gonna hit save. And then this is just gonna uh, save this exported file and it's going to render in Adobe Premiere and it'll be completely synced up. I won't have to do a thing. So then we just jump back over to Adobe Premiere. It loads the new file. So you can see that in place. And the thing I like about this is when I zoom in, I can see uh, these different audio wave things. And that means that I can go ahead and I can select my places for cuts and edits very easily. So you can see that I'm scrubbing past like everything um, else that I would usually um, you know, have going on in the beginning with starting the recording. 
So I can just go straight to the part of the video that I want it to start at. So for me, that's going to be just a little before I actually start speaking. So I'll just trim down using the uh, move selection tool here. And that allows me to trim on the timeline here in Adobe Premiere. The next thing that I can do is I can actually right click and I can ripple delete. And that will start off my video right the way I want it. And just to make playback a little easier, I'm going to reduce the quality over here from uh, half quality to a quarter quality in terms of the resolution. Um, you know, and yes, the video will be um, a little lower quality in terms of playback, but it's just going to make it easier and faster for me to scrub through, edit, and preview. So I'm going to zoom in a little more so that I can see these individual uh, wave tracks. It's just going to be easier to do my cuts and my edits this way when I want to cut out hums and ums and dead silence. So that's one of the things I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this uh, opens up. Okay, so that works out great. And if we scrub forward a little bit, we see that there's this huge gap of space uh, where I'm probably just breathing um, or not really speaking. So I'm going to use the uh, shortcut C and use the cut tool, the razor tool here. Uh, you can see it over in the menu. And I'm going to cut right about here. Then I'm going to select this, shortcut V to go back to the selection tool. I'm going to hit backspace to delete it. And I'm going to right click ripple delete. And what you're going to see is a very clean cut here. So that was an extremely clean cut. So that's the beginning of my video. And I'm just going to click save real quick. So one of the next things I'm going to do is because I already know how I want to um, open this, I'm going to go ahead and set a cross dissolve at the beginning of the video. And what that's going to do is it's going to mean the video is going to fade in from black. And if I want it to fade in just a little quicker, I can just shorten the transition like that and it'll be fine. Uh, go back to the end point. All right, I'm going to set a marker, a marker here because this is where I want uh, my intro um, overlay to go. So I actually create a PSD file that's a visual overlay and I don't want to hunt it down here in my bin. So I'm just going to uh, click on the search feature to filter through the bin and type in uh, lower thirds template, which means it's right here. And uh, this is what I would usually use. So I'm just going to uh, bring that over. I'm going to probably trim it a little bit. And I'm going to use cross dissolve on the beginning and on the end. And I'll probably make it just a little bit longer. And I have it here on the second layer of the timeline. I have it on a separate video track. So it's similar to a layer that you would use in Photoshop. So when I start the intro, this is what happens. So as you can see, by the time that I say my name, my uh, title through the overlay in the lower thirds actually appears. So if I wanted to actually animate that to be a fly in the way that some people like to do, what I could do is I could actually click on it. I can go over here to the effect controls panel, go ahead and click motion. And uh, what I could do uh, for the sake of this one is um, I can go ahead and just set a uh, keyframe for its position right now to be uh, right here. And then by the time it, uh, and I'll just, uh, that's, that shows just where it is right now. And at the very beginning of the video, I'll set another position keyframe by clicking this button. And what I'll do is um, instead, I will move it over out of frame. And so what happens now is that. Now, let's say I don't want it to um, come down from the top. Let's say I want to change that. That's not a problem. I'll just change this back to uh, 540. And let's say I want it to come in from the side. Not a problem. All I have to do is adjust the position over here and bring it over. 
uh, what happens is transitionally, it'll do that. So it'll fade in and it'll slide. Now, if I don't want to do the fade in effect, that's simple. I can just uh, go right over here. I can click and I can delete it. We'll go into the beginning here and simple. And if I want it to be faster, all I have to do is just move uh, the tween closer together. And that'll move faster. And let's just make sure that's all the way out of frame. All right. So that's simple and clean. And we've basically just created a simple motion graphic right here in Adobe Premiere without having to use After Effects or do anything fancy. So you can see that one of the advantages of editing and using the expanded uh, view in Adobe Premiere is having the ability to really see all of these long periods of um, silence where I'm, you know, possibly checking my notes, breathing, getting a drink of water, what have you. So I can just cut all of that out very quickly without even having to play through and listen to it the way that you would normally do. I can just do it visually. So we had an um here. The easiest way now to cut out this um is because we see where it starts and where it ends using the waveform. I can just cut after the word style. Do a ripple delete. And there we have a clean jump cut. And now we've eliminated that um, so we don't have to be annoyed or distracted by that in the final video. Okay, so that's the basics of how we're going to edit the overall video. One of the things that you guys see me do a lot in my videos, and I'm just going to zoom out here, is you'll see me add audio tracks to the background of my video. I'm going to show you that, and that's going to be one of the last things before I show you how to export this thing, because uh, the thing is, you don't need to sit here and watch me edit an 11-minute video down uh, from beginning to end. So what I do is I have a bunch of free music assets that I've gotten um, that I've collected over time. And what I'll do is I'll listen to the one that I like, and I'll find something that just matches the overall tonality of what I got going on or something I've used before. And I'll just drag it down to the timeline. And you'll see that there's an immediate uh, issue. The music is already overpowering the uh, voice text that goes with this. And that's because they're at the same levels. But we're going to go to the audio track mixer and we're going to pull down the audio considerably for the music track so it just fades into the background the way it's supposed to. I'm going to turn up the volume just a little bit so that you guys can kind of hear what's going on. Talk about how you find your own visual style as a graphic designer or as a digital artist. So what you're immediately noticing is that the volume of the audio is now subdued. It's fading into the background exactly the way we intended. It's getting rid of any of the little bit of ambient noise that we might have had left it's balancing out the video, it's creating tonality, it's making it more interesting. So what I would do is I would just add more audio tracks and fade them in together and let them run together in the background throughout the duration of the video. And that's basically how I would finish it out. And then obviously at the end, to bookend these things, I'll put a cross dissolve at the very end of the video, just like we had at the beginning, so that you can see that it transitions and fades out. And I'll just uh, end the video at the point where I stop talking. And I'll just trim down and my crossfade will come in accordingly. And I'll just shorten that up. So the video is going to end with... Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, you guys, thanks for watching. So that's my usual sign off. So that's how the whole thing works. It, I booked ended it to where it fades in from black. It fades out to black. It's bookended. We've got my lower thirds. We've got my background music. We've got everything that I usually do in these videos that you guys see from me every week. So that's what we have going on here. And I've processed the audio. It's clean. It's crisp. You can hear it even uh, without your YouTube settings or your volume turned up all the way. 
it's still going to be something that you can hear very clearly. So now we come to how I export these videos uh, to upload them to the web. I actually prefer to use the Adobe Media Encoder to do this, but there's a few things I do before I do that. One of the things I do is I'll um, edit and leave myself a comment with the title of the video. And this one is going to be um, graphic design, uh, defining your visual style. Let's go with how to, because that's always a good one. How to define your visual style. And we'll do that. And the output name will be the same. And a lot of people debate this, um, and I'm saving this to my external uh, Seagate hard drive, but a lot of people debate this. But the thing is, I do believe that in terms of SEO, that your file name does play a role uh, in your YouTube relevance simply because all other search engine optimization works that way. Google works that way, and it's a known fact. So I assume that video works the same way. And you know what? It's been working out pretty well for me. Uh, you can do more metadata here and you can uh, make sure that's outputted to your video if you want. I use the um, H.264 codec for exporting my videos instead of using a YouTube preset. I use a custom preset that I've already set up that I've determined for myself for the way I shoot my videos on the Nikon D3200 gives me the best overall quality, uh, doesn't depreciate the quality of the video, and still lets it encode to YouTube very quickly and easily without loss of quality. You'll notice that um, for my video, that the input of the source down here and the output are relatively the same in terms of everything that's going on with these. They're the same frame rate, they're the same uh, resolution and size, uh, that's what's going on here. And the reason for that is to avoid something called transcoding. And think of that as um, just the depreciation that would typically happen whenever um, you're changing from one file format to another. Uh, let's go down here to bitrate settings and encoding. Uh, I'm not going to get super technical with this because this is basically just um, a how-to. Ke keeping these settings the same as what they were in camera is what I prefer to do. For YouTube videos, I prefer not to remember at uh, maximum depth. If I was doing a documentary or doing like an action video, I might do that, but I prefer not to. You can set keyframes. That's fine. Um, I don't see any real issue there. Now, as far as the bitrate encoding, VBR, VBR pass one is usually the way to go. And um, target bitrate, when you're doing a talking head video, like a vlog, uh, five is fine. If you were going to do action or be moving around, I would do something higher and I would set a higher maximum big rate, but uh, five and 10 is good, and it's gonna keep your file size relatively low. You don't need to use maximum render quality. There can be issues with that. Uh, for this type of video where you're being mostly still and just talking, it's perfectly fine. All of this is fine, and you can either export it directly uh, from Premiere, which takes forever, or you can send it to Adobe Media Encoder, which is what I prefer to do, where you queue it up, and what happens is, you can go ahead and render it. And while you're doing that, you're not taking up a uh, room in Adobe Premiere and you can go ahead and keep working on another video. Um, you see that I like to, in the same file, keep a lot of videos that are going to be very similar or use the same assets and use the same workflow. I keep them all there. Uh, here in um, Media Encoder, you could change some of the uh, output settings if you want. You can change the name. You can do all of that independent of Premiere. And I'm just going to get rid of this here because I'm not really ready to export this. I just wanted to show you how I would do that. And when I do, it would render and it would do all that. And it would let me keep working in Premiere on the same file without affecting the output or on another file um, in here or rather on another sequence on the timeline in here. You know, I could work on something else that I have going, edit another video, go back to an old video, edit that, what have you. And I can do that and just not interrupt myself. So I could just sit here and I could edit all day. And sometimes I do that. And I could just keep rendering and editing without ever stopping. So in a nutshell, that's more or less what my video editing workflow is for um, Adobe Premiere Pro when I'm doing my YouTube videos. I know a lot of you have wondered probably over the months or over the past year how I make these videos. A lot of you have requested that I do a video showing how I make my YouTube videos. 
this is not that video. That video will be uh, me showing you my entire YouTube setup and showing you the studio here and giving you a little tour and showing you all the different tools that I use from my camera to my microphones, uh, you know, to my different computers, things like that. So make sure you tune in and you watch that. This video was just to, um, one, show you some of the basics of editing in Adobe Premiere Pro and show you how I specifically do my editing in Adobe Premiere Pro for my talking head vlog style videos. Everyone has a different way of approaching it. This is mine and now you know my uh, tips and tricks, you know a bit of my secret sauce, you know my process now. So hopefully this will help you do better video editing on your own in Adobe Premiere Pro. Or if you're new to Adobe Premiere Pro, this will show you how easy it is and what you really need to be doing, what the process and steps are, and that's nothing overwhelming that you need to be intimidated by. I'll be doing more um, Adobe Premiere tor uh, tutorials in the future, and what I'll do is I'll probably take, I'll probably start with most of the things that I did in this video, and then break them down and elaborate them on, on them a little bit. Those videos are not going to be super short. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do them in like uh, roughly five uh, minutes like I do some of the Photoshop tutorial videos for quick stuff. Some of them I can do, like um, how to do titles, that's easy enough. Um, so I can show you guys that in under five minutes. Most of the Adobe uh, Premiere Pro videos are probably going to be 15 to 30 minute videos just because it gets technical and I need to show you how to do these things and what the tools are and explain uh, just video editing processes, especially if you're not someone who's familiar with it. So I hope that you guys won't find that too tedious or too boring because I think it's just going to be the best way to get you guys the information. If you have more questions or comments about video editing and my video editing process for Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, let me know that in the comment section as well. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other videos in my channel. And as always, you guys, thanks for watching.